I'm often reminded that any homily that lasts over, lasts over seven or eight minutes usually turns into two homilies, so I'll be brief. Tomorrow is Respect for Life Sunday. I, want, I would like to take just one additional minute and reflect on this very important topic as reported to us by our United States Catholic bishops. Pope Benedict has called upon us to build what he and Pope John Paul, Pope John Paul II have called the civilization of love. A civilization where the rights and dignity of each person, especially those who are the most vulnerable, the unborn and the frail elderly, are respected from the moment of conception until natural death. Where the family, based on the love of a husband and wife, welcomes children into the world and marks to them the truths and values that make good citizens. Where the hungry and homeless are assisted, the immigrant welcomed, the environment protected, and all legitimate paths to peace are pursued. It is in light of that task of ours that we evaluate the moral quality of what is proposed by candidates and public officials and work proactively for the ongoing transformation of our society. Thus we can clearly see that there are some things that we can never do or cooperate with because they are always incompatible with the love of God and neighbor. Such actions are so deeply flawed that they are always opposed to the authentic good of persons. These are called intrinsically evil actions. They must always be rejected and opposed, and must never be supported or condoned. In our nation, abortion is at the forefront of these intrinsically evil actions. Since 1973, the year abortion was legalized in the United States Supreme Court with Roe v. Wade, nearly 49 million innocent human lives have been changed. When Pope Benedict visited America, he had praised Americans for their generosity and their optimism, and for the role which religion continues to play in our society. He called us to be true to our founding ideals and principles, and to maintain the truth and values that flow from faith and reason into the public square. He stated, now is the time to respond to the challenge. Think about that statement and what God might be asking of you. Now is the time to respond.